Hi, welcome to Dye's Home and Garden. Firstly, I'll apologise because my hair's wet. Um, I've just come in from swimming, haven't been home long. But I wanted to get onto this because um, it's my granddaughter's second birthday tomorrow. We're having the party today and I just wanted to take something along, but also I wanted to try this recipe out. Now this recipe I saw on a YouTube channel called Farmer's Wife Homestead. Thank you, Stacey. This is a great recipe. Hopefully I can do it justice. Um, but your YouTube was great. So yeah, if you want to check out her channel, it's a great channel. Um, that's Farmer's Wife Homestead. So here we go. This is uh, hot cross buns. So not quite Easter yet, but it will be soon. So who doesn't love them? Let's get on to it. I'm making two varieties and I'm going to make them both at once. So um, yeah, I'll just switch you around so that you can see what I'm doing. Here are my bowls. You can see my recipe book over there. Um, yes, I don't know this recipe. I will be reading and, and following along from the recipe. So the first thing we need to do is to get one and a half cups of warm water. Now, So there we've got our water in these bowls. Now the water only needs to be lukewarm. I've made that just a little bit too warm, um, but I'm gonna be adding some things before I add the yeast. So this will cool it down a little. So I need five um, tablespoons of sugar, brown sugar. So I just want to dissolve that sugar in that water. And I'm just waiting for the water to cool a bit. So just test your water. Now it's a little bit warm still. It's, it should just be lukewarm, which means when you put your finger in, it should feel about the same temperature as your finger. Okay, once that water is at, is lukewarm, then we add our yeast. So it's three teaspoons of yeast. Just mix that around. It didn't all get wet. Some of it's just in clumps and it's not getting wet. I'm just mixing that a little bit better. Mmm, oh, I love the smell of yeast. So what we're waiting for is, I'll just scrape the sides there a bit. I can see there's a lot of yeast sitting on the side. We're just waiting for that to make sure that the yeast is um, blooming. So it'll start to form bubbles. Yeah, 
yeah, we can see it's starting to form bubbles. You can actually see bubbles there. Okay, the next thing we need to do is to add an egg. Fifty grams of soft butter chunks. I'm just waiting for them to soften. I've just put them in the other room, which is warmer. Um, I can add them after I add the flour. So we're after four and a half cups of flour. Now, let's. I don't have much flour, so I hope I've got enough. But I'm going to be using some wholemeal flour in this to just to top it up I think. I'll see how I go. So there's our flour, there's four cups there and half a cup there. I should have enough. Actually, I need to reserve some of this flour. So I am going to top it up with my wholemeal flour. So I'm putting about one cup of wholemeal flour in the, in the other ones I'm making. Only because I didn't have enough flour. I thought I had another packet of flour, but um, I was wrong. Okay, so we're adding four and a half cups to that. Um, five tablespoons of, of milk powder. Now, if at the beginning where we added the water, you can actually add milk. If you don't use milk, this is where you need to use, I just have to count, the, the powder. That's two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I um, I don't have a lot of milk in the house because I don't drink it <laughs> and I live alone. So um, when visitors come, yeah, I will m make up some powdered milk. I mean, they sometimes I have just, I do have the long life milk on standby for when the kids are here. So we need, a teaspoon of salt. We need two teaspoons of mixed spice. Now this is for both of them. Uh, I might get a smaller spoon there. So it's two teaspoons of mixed spice. I'm gonna heat them up because this is a very small spoon. Two. I just add just a little bit extra because it's not quite a teaspoon, this spoon. Okay, there's our mixed spice. And one teaspoon of cinnamon. Now, this one, I'm going to make my fruit buns. 
So, I'm just looking for my packet. What did I do with my packet of... I've got sultanas here, so it's a cup of sultanas, so that'll be all of those. dried fruit mix left over from Christmas when I made the Christmas cake. So I'm going to throw that in too because it needs using. So there's um, candy peel in there as well as sultanas. Um, yeah, it doesn't have everything that's on that packet. Um, it does not have cherries. It does not have pineapple. All it was was sultanas. Uh, I think there's some currants in there and peel. So yeah, that's just to use it up, but normally you just use a cup of um, sultanas. In the chocolate one, in the chocolate one, we need two heaped tablespoons of cocoa powder. And then we need chocolate chips. Again, I've got stuff left over from Christmas. So I'm going to add more than what the recipe calls for. So here we are. We've got some white chocolate chips. The packet's already been opened. So it's a cup of chocolate chips. Um, this is... And say how much? Oh, 200 grams this packet is. Oh, and it's summer here, and these have been in the pantry, and it looks like they've melted because I've got big chunks. <laughs> Just trying to break those up a little bit. Just some of the chunks. They will melt in the oven, but um, yeah. Okay. And I might add some more white. I'll just go and get my butter. Oops, just some more. And so it's 50 grams in each. Okay, so you can do this by hand. I've actually got a dough hook on here. So I'll just move one out of the way and concentrate on this one.
So once it comes together, that's pretty much together. I just need to um, mix it for just one more minute. So the next thing I'm going to do is just to put a little flour down. Take the dough out. Just going to knead it just a little bit. I'm not sure how well my dough hooks actually kneaded it. So you don't need to, you don't need to knead this a lot. Um, yeah, it doesn't need much kneading. Oh, the spices in that smell beautiful. And the chocolatey smell lovely. Okay, so I've done that now. making it into a ball, putting it back into my into my bowl. Now I'm going to set that aside in a warm room until it doubles in size. My lounge room gets the morning sun and the afternoon sun. So I've just popped it in there. Now you can see this one. Take a closer look and you can see where the yeast is all bubbling up on the sides of that one. So I won't even bother washing anything up. We'll just get straight into it and we'll mix this one.
Okay, there we have it. Back in the bowl. Cover it up and put it aside between, for between 45 minutes to an hour to double in size. Okay, so here are our, our fruit scones, uh, sorry, hot cross buns. And I was just taking that wrap off carefully because I'm going to be using it again in a moment. So I'm just putting some more flour on my board here. just going to turn this out and first of all I'll cut it in half it's not quite half one of those is bigger than the other but it doesn't matter okay so what I'm going to do is to just roll it out and I'm going to roll that again Just going to make yeah, this will make 16 rolls so right there's four there roll this into another sausage half half again the other one the um, sultanas and bits of fruit keep coming out so just putting them back in okay cut that in half make a little log of that cut it in half and half again and the last one, just trying to stick the fruit back in. Okay, half, half. There we go, all done. So we've got 16 pieces there. Now, what I need to do is to take each piece and to press them so that I'm making it into a ball. So I'm just bringing it all down now, once I've got it into the ball, I just need to roll it around. So that's stretching the dough and working the gluten. Now, before I did that, I should have got my trays ready. straight in. These need room to rise. So I think that I'll get a dozen, uh, sorry, half a dozen in there. So again, I've got this one here. So just stretching it down, bringing it all down to the bottom there and tucking it under and then placing it down and just rolling it around to stretch that dough and make it all nice at the bottom. So it's all nice there. I don't know if you can see where I'm putting them. There's my tray there. So these are going to be um, put in that warm room again and they're going to be rising. So they need to double in size again. So again, just rolling that around.
just picking up that fruit that's falling out and rolling it again. Okay, I'm going to continue doing this with the rest of them. Now what I'm going to do is to set these aside to double in size. Now, before I set them aside, I need to cover them. So that's where I'm going to use that plastic wrap that I used before on the bowl. So there we go. I'm just putting them in the warm room. Okay, so here I am now with the chocolate ones. Oops, careful with my um, wrap because I'm going to use that again. Just put that to the side and just turn that out. Right, so what we want to do here is cut this in half. set that aside. We actually want to cut it in quarters don't we? So I've done that. I'll just get this into a log shape. Okay. So we've got 16 of those. I'll just prepare a pan for those. So again, just like before, tucking them under and then rolling them. Okay, we'll come back when I've done all that. Okay, while that is um, rising, so I've put them aside, they've got a double in size again. So while that's happening, what we need to do is to make a paste to make our crosses on the top. So we need a quarter of a cup of, of flour, just plain flour. And I'm just gonna add some water to this. because we just want it like a paste. Now, that's actually too thick. I'm just gonna add a little bit more water. So, 
there you can see it there now just make sure you mix it all and that there's no lumps in that so it's a watery consistence consistency but while it stands while we're waiting for those to um, to rise that's going to thicken up a bit so before I use it I'll check back and I'll show you what it looks like the other thing we need to do We need to make a, a sugar syrup. Now to make the sugar syrup, we're using three tablespoons, oh, a lump in there three tablespoons of white sugar and I'm just going to put a little bit of boiling water in there Now I've just put a little bit of boiling water in that and we're just waiting for that sugar to dissolve. Now if that sugar doesn't dissolve you can do two things. You can just pop that on in a saucepan on, um, on the stove top or you can stick it in the microwave. I think that water wasn't hot enough. I'm going to stick it in the microwave but we just want that sugar to dissolve. Okay so here we are and they have doubled in size. So I'm just going to put the crosses on now. Now I'm just uh, showing you the, um, the paste that I made. I did have to add some more flour to it, but you can see the consistency that we're after there. So it's, um, you'll see what I'm doing with it. Once you've seen, then you'll realize the thickness when you're working with it, what, how it needs to be. So I'm just going to I'm just going to pour this into a Ziploc bag. There is more there that I could scrape out if I need to, so I'm just having trouble doing it with, with um, limited hands. <laughs> Trying to hold the jug and trying to hold that. So. so all I'm going to do is to get this down in one section and then I'm just going to cut a tiny bit of the corner off and then I can pipe it. So we're just going to pipe it across like that. and then across that way. Okay, I'm just gonna get them in the oven and then I'm gonna do the rest and then we'll come back. So here is our first batch fresh out the oven. And while they're still hot, we're going to put that um, sugar syrup glaze over the top. So there we go. And when that's done, we need to take them out so that they don't get soggy bottoms, so that they can cool down. So there we go. There we have it. Now let's pull one apart so that I can show it to you. Oh, it looks absolutely beautiful and light and fluffy. Take a look at that. There we go. Okay, let's get the rest of them out. So 
Thanks for joining me on that. Oh, you can see all my dishes in the background that I've done. Uh, thanks for joining me. And I hope you enjoyed that. Now remember, it wasn't my recipe. It came from the YouTube channel, um, Farmer's Wife Homestead. So thank you, Stacey, for sharing that with everyone. And I'm just so happy with the way that these have come out. So if you want to see other good recipes like that, um, go to Stacey's YouTube channel or subscribe to mine because I'm always putting videos out. Um, and there, I have a variety of videos. Mine aren't just cooking, so mine are sewing, um, crafts, gardening, preserving food, lots of different things. So give it a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe so you'll get notified when there's new videos and thanks for watching everyone bye for now